This is so great. Uh, let me thank Whitman Walker and their extraordinary legal services program for this honor. I, I had the uh, pleasure of doing Melvin's job and Bob's job a few times in the past, but I never thought I'd end up as the honoree. It's sort of a nice change of pace. It's a lot less work, actually. Um, <laughs> But because of the involvement I've had with this organization over the years, I know about the important work that the legal services uh, program does. And I must say, there's no more worthy cause you could be supporting in the city. Certainly the challenge posed to, uh, by uh, clients and patients with HIV in the city is not going away anytime soon. So thanks to all of you for being here to support the legal services program and the important work that Dan Werner and his colleagues do. Uh, I was, uh, as Melvin said, extremely fortunate eight years ago to be the person who got the chance to contribute to the cause of equality by working on the Lawrence case and arguing it in the Supreme Court. Um, and that really was an amazing thing. It really was kind of the watershed decision of our generation uh, that made possible much of what's happened since in the area of equality for LGBT citizens. Uh, and so having had that chance, I've done what I can since to contribute by speaking and raising money and litigating, as Melvin said, with GLAD, uh, challenging Section 3 of the Defense of Marriage Act. Uh, and those cases involve uh, a really extreme form of discrimination, when you think about it. The flat refusal of our federal government, to which our clients pay taxes every, day, every year, uh, to re recognize their marital status under the laws of the states where they live. Uh, this is not just discrimination, though it is that. It's also a this law is a, a clear invasion of the basic role of the states under our constitutional scheme. For it, after all, is the states who get to decide in this country who's married and who's not married. It's not the federal government's role to have an opinion on that subject. Uh, so it's a case, we think, not just about civil rights, but also about federalism. And uh, one of our theories about bringing the case was that that piece of it may be appealing to some of the more conservative judges out there in the country like Judge Toro, a Nixon appointee, and maybe, hopefully, at least five members of the Supreme Court someday. Uh, at least we hope so. Uh, it was certainly gratifying to see the Attorney General of the United States and the President of the United States announcing just a month or so or two ago that they thought we were right, that the, the section of the, this law that refuses to recognize these marriages is so clearly unconstitutional as to be absolutely indefensible. That was absolutely an amazing moment in the history of our movement uh, to see the, the entire executive branch of the country come out so strongly on our side and obviously it's very encouraging. Uh, having said that, let me just add, it's, it's a real pleasure to share the awards tonight with my friends Ted Olson and David Boyce. They've done, as we all know, an extraordinary job of making the case for marriage equality in this country, both in federal court leading to a great decision from Judge Walker, but also in the court of public opinion. That work has played an, a very significant role in changing the way Americans view these issues. If you look at the polls right now, the support for marriage equality is going up almost vertically. It's going up so fast. Uh, and I, it's certainly with that kind of change in public opinion, every reason to think that the Supreme Court one day soon will agree with all of us that there's no reason and that there's no persuasive argument for discrimination in the area of marriage equality. As uh, Justice Scalia himself once put it, as Ted knows, uh, in his dissent in Lawrence, one of my favorite opinions in some ways, but not in others. Um, <laughs> once you recognize that LGBT citizens exist, and they're real, and they're out there, and they have relationships and families that are every bit as valid as anybody else's, it's pretty tough to stop short of uh, banning discrimination in marriage rights. There simply is no remaining argument that makes any sense. So uh, that opinion, which is, by the way, been quoted against uh, the opponents of marriage equality many times by Ted and others, is, uh, I think, uh, clearly correct. <laughs> so, you know, Lawrence leads to marriage equality, and it will. It will very soon, and I think it's, it's a wonderful time that we're living through. But uh, thank you again to Dan and all of the people at Whitten Walker Health, and to my friend David Messing for that lovely comment earlier on, and to Michael, my husband, who's standing in the back of the room hiding over there somewhere. Um, I very much appreciate this honor. It's really lovely to be here tonight. Thank you.